Former Trade and Industry Minister says despite a strong foundation laid for Ghana's socioeconomic transformation, he would have done things differently if he were to be the CEO of the country. In a televised address to the nation last night to announce his presidential ambitions, Mr. Alan Chermantin said he intends to be a transformational leader by leading what he describes as the Great Transformation Plan, GTP, to save the Ghanaian economy. Key among his plan is to revolutionize the agri sector. So how exactly does he intend to execute this GTP? GTP. Let's take a look at the pointers from his address um, yesterday. And he says, I wish to use this platform to formally announce my decision to contest the flag bearership of the new patriotic party when party officially opens nominations for that purpose. He said the president has laid a strong foundation for the socioeconomic development of our country. Although I believe there are things that could have been done differently, my vision is to build a superstructure on this foundation that will bring prosperity to our nation. And to avoid going back to the IMF, he says, we need a new plan, a plan that will lead us to a more self-reliant and resilient economy. That plan must move Ghana from stability and growth to transformation. And to achieve the strategic goal of transforming our dear country to become the shining star of the new Africa, I will, as a president, launch and lead the execution of the Great Transformational Plan GTP of Ghana, which will span the period of 2025 to 2030. And uh, he has 10 pillars uh, from the GTP. He says a strong macroeconomic environment, a new agricultural revolution for Ghana, operation on a farm, industrial transformation, accelerated infrastructure development, digital uh, mainstream, and uh, there is more. He, he, he talks about in this 10 pillars of the GTP. He says energy security and diversification, decarbonization and climate resilience, national security and defense optimization, downsizing government, strategic engagement with the international community. Those are the 10 pillars of his GTP, um, the transformation he talks about. I've been joined by General Secretary of the Agri Workers Union, Edward Kariwa, Kariwe, for uh, more on this. Uh, first, uh, let's look at the 10 pillars contained in the um, former trade and industry minister who is uh, aspiring to become flag bearer of the NPP. In his GTP, uh, which he seeks to transform the nation between 2025 to uh, 2030. In there is a new agricultural revolution for Ghana. He says it's called Operation Own a Farm. How does this, uh, all of this come across to you? Well, let me say good morning and thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, of course, um, the, the Honorable Minister is seeking the support of Ghana, particularly those within the MPP, to be the flag bearer and eventually to uh, run for presidency for this country. So certainly these are his uh, ambitions, and then um, those ambitions are put there, seeking to convince Ghana and particularly those who vote him to become the flag bearer, to accept him. But these are good plans, but as we always say, it's not enough to have good plans. What is more important is about the outcomes of those uh, uh, plans. Some of these plans have been part of the government that he belongs, which has been in power for nearly 80 years. And he himself, as a minister responsible for trade and industry, had a big role to play 
in achieving those developmental agenda of the government. Unfortunately, we are still talking about the development as though we are now beginning, as though a new opportunity has come for us to uh, correct the wrongs or to start. And that's where the difficulty is. And of course, um, he's going to compete. So he needs to convince the people. For you, from where you sit, I mean, uh, you've monitored government's agric um, um, initiatives, planting for food and job and what have you. Now, um, Ms. Alan Chairman Singh says there are things that could have been done differently in the Akofuado's government. I mean, he's saying that in this transformation agenda, he's looking at Operation Own a Farm. But if you just suppose that to what you have seen in the Akofuado-led government, what would be your expectation if indeed he becomes president? Well, you know, in the 1970s, we had Operation Feed Yourself and Operation Feed Your Industry, which was very successful to the extent that we are told in 1975, Ghana did not import food into this country. So Operation Own a Farm is similar to Operation Feed Yourself, whereby every Ghanaian is encouraged to go a little or have a little farm at all costs. But the planting for food and jobs is not too different from that, except that when it came to the implementation of the planting for food and jobs, uh, a lot went wrong. So, yes, you can say that Operation Own a Farm and all Ghanaians would actually want to do that. But how is that going to be done? You know, the, the problem I think the government has is not about having good policies, but it's about operationalizing those policies. And he belongs to that government. He still belongs to that government. He had the opportunity to also help correct the problems within the uh, Plan for Food and Jobs program. There's no excuse to say that I was not the minister responsible for agriculture because he was a cabinet member. And I believe all that happened was if had cabinet endorsement and he was one of them. So I'm not seeing what they, he could come to do different uh, than what uh, is under the plan for food and jobs. Maybe if he gets the chance because he wants to be, he is going to be the president. He, so if he then becomes the president, he's not the person who is going to implement those policies. It is ministers like him, as he is today, who is not a, a president, but implementing policy. So I'm not too sure that if he becomes a president and he has these ideas, and then you have a minister to implement those policies, uh, he can guarantee yes, that those policies will be properly implemented. Mm. Yeah. That's so it, it, he's still talking about generalities. And when you are at the point of generalities, it's, it's very difficult for one to say, oh, it is not doable. But when it comes to the details, what we know, the history that we already have, the experience that we already have in this country, and particularly with his government, gives a lot of doubt that uh, what he's saying will be done or, uh, or, or can be done. I've been, I've been joined by Dr. Bernard Tutu, uh, Edward Kariwa, hanging there for me. Uh, Dr. Bernard Tutu Boahin, he's a political marketing consultant with the University of Education, Winneba. I'm grateful for your time, uh, Dr. Tutu. I, I, I'm much interested in um, the Agric Minister, um, the former Trade and Industry Minister, I beg your pardon, who actually admits that even though there's a strong foundation, there are so many things that could have been done differently. This is a member of the Akufuado government. Does this make him any better candidate for the position?
Hello, Doc. Dr. Subwahin, are you there? All right, we seem to be having challenges with Dr. Tutubwahin. We'll try and get him back. Doc Dr. Tutubwahin, are you there? Yes, Asha, can you hear me? Right, loud and clear now. So I I'm asking you what, I mean, what you make of the statement that is coming from the um, former Minister, Minister of Trades and Industry, Alan Chermanti, who's declared that he wants to become president. And I'm saying that he has admitted that there were a lot of things that Akufuadu government could have done differently. But this is a member of the Akufuadu government. Does this ad admission make him any better candidate for the position? Yes, Asha, good morning. Um, and good morning to listeners. I think that um, his speech um, and the communication that he has put out, out there, you know, he has actually recognize the good things that the Akufuado led government, you know, had done. And he believes that uh, there is still room for improvement. And for that reason, um, he wants to, you know, lead the party as a flag bearer when Akufuado's term of office has ended. Uh, it symbolizes a kind of continuation. And then again, it symbolizes some level of departure, you know, from, you know, the administration of uh, His Excellency Anna Adodamke Fuado. Now, you realize that that becomes a bit needful because of the fact that um, he also must position himself, you know, within the voting uh, market so that he wouldn't be doing the same thing that his government, you know, had done. And it is also very important that um, we put on record. You see, the fact that he was serving in the Kufado led government doesn't mean that every decision that he was part of, he probably agreed with it. Given the opportunity, there are certain things he could have done differently. And that is what I think that he meant by saying that um, he didn't agree with all the decisions, you know, that were taken. I think that when you look at the things that he has said, uh, when you listen to the tape carefully, when you read, you know, the things that he has sent, he has put out there, um, it tells you that even though he believes in the policies of the Kufado led government. He has also come up with certain innovations which could add up, you know, to the Kufado's uh, policy. Um, I.e., moving forward, what should be done differently, you know, to put Ghana on that economic development. Now, he was right in what he said. And this is something that, you know, some of us have um, argued for, that our economy is not that robust. It is not that sustainable. And for going to IMF for seven times would probably not change anything. And it, there is a possibility that if you don't change the fundamentals of our macro economy, all right, we would still go back to IMF. So by the time my last one is grown, you know, we might have gone to IMF about 30 times. And that would not be good for us as a country. So we need to build a solid foundation based on agriculture, based on industrialization. And if a Kufuado's government has come up with one district, one factory, that's the one D1F, what is he going to do differently to make sure that the 1D1F does not become a mirage, but something that is sustainable, something that will serve posterity, something that will create jobs for the people. Is it the case that we will implement 1D1F, but still spend money to import, you know, goods and services into this country? Mm. 
We can't follow on that same trajectory. All right. And there is a need for a departure. There is a need of for innovation. There is a need for growth. So if he is saying that he is going to enforce industrialization, all that we need is that he must specifically tell us the details of that industri industrialization drive. If he's talking about the new agricultural revolution, he needs to put up in plain communication what he meant by that. If he's talking about, um, how do you call it, mechanization of agriculture, you see, he must come up with tangible policy, you know, that will speak to the Ghanaian people. And if they buy into it, then probably he's somebody who probably can be there. But he must also be aware that even though, you see, his speech was more or less targeting the national voter, you know, he still has something to do to um, make himself appealing to the delegates. Because if the delegates don't vote you into power, all right, you cannot fulfill the national agenda. And so he needs to work hard and make sure that he gets you know, the acceptance of the national vote and the endorsement of the, uh, sorry, of the delegates for him to become the flag bearer. And of course, he can just move ahead with the policies that he has. Unless probably somebody is trying to tell me that his communication is directed at both the delegates of his party and the national vote as well. But that not said, I think that it is an innovation in terms of presidential candidature. It is an innovation from a perspective, you know, um, um, presidential candidate. And I believe that even before he goes into his internal election, he has set certain records, a record that is communicating, you know, to Ghanaians that I am Alain Shamatin, this is my brand, this, these are my beliefs, and this is what I want to achieve for Ghana going forward. And I believe that it is something that has been set, and it is going to put other presidential candidates on their toes, and for them to also come out, to tell us the direction with which they are going to send this country. I think that Ghanaians are tired of making promises without fulfilling them. And that, I think that is another argument we need to focus on and discuss. Well, uh, Dr. Tutubuahin, uh, one of the things he, one of the key things actually he seeks to do is to downsize government. If you've been following conversations, you will know that this is the biggest frustration of the citizenry. Downsize government so that we can have some uh, relief with our economy. But that hasn't happened. Now, this is a member of government. And people say, you didn't have to become president to be able to do that. You could have advised the president to do that, even as a member of the government. And if you couldn't do that, and you think that your government has failed in that direction, then you are as well a failure. Hello, Doc. Dr. Tutubuahin, are you there? All right, so we lost Raja. the car. Right, right, good to have you back. Yes, so I think you are right in saying that this is one of the frustrations of Ghanaians, and that is true. For me, when you study carefully the, uh, the template of the GTP, basically, he is telling us that he is going to do something different. And that is the first question that you ask. And for me, it also suggests that he's a listening person. And remember he said that he's going to be a transformational leader. And again, he expects that his cabinet, you know, his ministers, would also become servant politicians. Very important what are Ghanaians. Now, you see, Asha, 
It is not the issue of him painting his government as a fieldwork, but it is an issue of him branding himself and positioning himself within the political market, mm. within the hearts and minds of the Ghanaian voter. That is the most important thing, and that is what he seeks to do. Mm. As to the question as he could have suggested you know, to his government, for them or for him to implement, you see, I don't think that anybody has evidence that he suggested it and it was not taken. Yeah. Or he didn't even suggest at all. Yeah. Whether he suggested or didn't, it is still a gap within the political market that he must fill or that a president must fill. Now, you realize that Ghanaians have lambasted the Nana Kufuado led government with the size of government. And for a long time, we've not heard anything, we've not seen any change to the point that the president was even throwing a question back to us, you know, asking us that when we talk about reducing the size of government or when we talk about uh, changing, you know, ministers, what do we mean? All right. So it is not the uh, issue that. Probably Alan suggested or didn't suggest, mm. or he could have suggested. Mm. All right. Now, he has also seen, because from a marketing perspective, you also must understand what your target market is looking for, for you to put a program together, a marketing mix program together, to satisfy them. And so, if he has identified that this is what Ghanaians are looking for, and if I can make it possible for them, then, of course, his product will sell. All right? Mm. So I don't assume that Asha will go to the market to buy something, and that thing will not serve a purpose. So whoever identifies the need of Aisha and puts it in the marketplace, when Asha goes there and finds it needful, Asha will buy. As simple as that. All right? So my belief is that he's being smart. Is trying to link the problems of Ghanaians, you know, to his ideologies or his ideas, to put a program together that will meet the needs of the ordinary Ghanaian. Mm. And for me, it is not a betrayal. I'm grateful for your time, Dr. Bernard Tutuboahen. He is a political marketing consultant at the University of Education, Weneba. Uh, Edward Carriwe, if you are still there, you indicated earlier that it's easier said than done, especially uh, from where he finds himself. He hasn't been president and he doesn't actually know how it feels. I mean, so these are words until they are put into action. And, and I'm saying that if indeed... Um, these ideas were to work, how would you want it implemented? Well, um, let me even also say that, um, yes, um, the question about whether he gave advice and the advice was not taken or it was taken or no it was advice not was not given, given at all. Had to do it, you know, Governor is effective. So the change that he had today, if indeed probably he gave an advice and it was not taken. When you become a president to also, you're not going to work alone. Yes. You're, it is still going to be a collective. So that challenge will still come when he finally becomes a president. But we also have to be find that this message is sent. He started to those who vote for him, and probably not to all Ghanaians. He will later on come to, to all Ghanaians uh, for the general vote. That is, if he's able to carry the flag there for the party. Then as his partner, his party, to uh, win the hearts of the voters, and come out to make him uh, a, flag, a flag bearer. Now, the, because it's still, all the things he has said are still at the general level. And to, he's also less strategic because, and probably, you know, he can use one uh, press release or statement to assign your, your strategies. 
if you not also in a good way, because uh, uh, as a way of you may publish some of the strategy uh, and hold them as the time goes by. So it will, and I, I can see that is why he's still at the uh, general level. Mm. So it will, it will then be very difficult for uh, someone to say that I would like him to, this is how it is going to be implemented. Because if you're talking about a new revolution for agriculture, mm. the question again is how is it going to be now? What is the nature of that revolution? Mm -hmm. Did we have a revolution before? Was the planning for food and jobs a revolution? Mm -hmm. Is it because we are just using the term revolution? In practical terms, would there be radical uh, change in policy, which we can then call a revolution? We, we, we are yet to see those things. And he has not given us details about that. And I also learned that he's saying that there will be what, a manifesto to that. So the details will come later on. So as it stands now, we have to take him for his aspects and then uh, hope that when he comes up with the details, we can then uh, say uh, with certainty as to whether or not uh, his plans can be uh, fulfilled. fulfilled. Edward Kariwa, I'm grateful for your time. He's the General Secretary of the uh, Agric Workers Union. Now, a group calling itself, apart for Alan in the Upper West Regional Capital, was say the only person who can bring them back to the NPP fold to enable the party to break the eight is Alan Kojo Tremantin. Joy News' Upper West Regional Correspondent Rafiq Salam has more. The press conference held by a group calling themselves Upper West for Alan first congratulated Alan Kujutiramanten for having the heart to resign from the Akufuado government as trade and industry minister and President Akufuado for gladly accepting their resignation. They then zero in on some of the projects and programs embarked on by the former trade and industry minister during his reign. Razak Bawa is the convener of Upper West for Alan. Under the transformational leadership of the Venerable Alan Cash as Street and Industry Minister, a record number of business resource centers have been dotted all over the country. 67 in number, 37 fully operational with workers and 30 completed but yet to be operational. Again, the famous 1D1F, a cardinal pillar in the 2016 manifesto of our great MPP, has excellently been translated from abstract to reality with the magic touch and quality leadership of Chief Alan as Minister of Trade and Industry. In 2022, there were about 282 factories built, upgraded, and functional in various regions in Ghana. The eight other ministers in the Akufuado government who are nursing plans to run for the flag leadership of the MPP to also follow suit or they are kicked out by the president. We, the members of the Upper West for Alan in the Upper West region, would like to use this medium to urge all current ministers and party members holding other portfolios in government who intend to run for the MPP flag bearer position to follow the good example set by the Honorable Alan Cash and resign from their positions as ministers of state and other portfolios as stipulated in our constitution. This selfless act will benefit the party and on a large scale, Ghana, as well as provide opportunities for other party members to be able to be made ministers. For members of Upper West for Alan, the only person who can re-energize and revitalize grassroots members of the party who are demoralized for the party to continuously have power beyond eight years is Alan Kojo Chiramantan. Party is about numbers. It is not about the privileged few. It is about numbers because it is numbers that call for a president to be elected. And we are thinking that a lot of us, including those who are here, and those who are not even here, have been deprived. And they are sitting with some kind of bitterness in them. And we believe if Alan should be on course, all these people will be online. We've known that since M if, you, if you are a member of MPP, and you want to enjoy MPP, and you know the rules and regulations in a party, 
no one will tell you that now it's Alam's turn. And we are ever ready. You know, there's a saying that if there's a sweet home, it's a woman. So we, the women, we are ever ready to help Chief Alan do the grassroots work to work and get the aid to be bricked. No sure about that. We are coming fully. No Alan, no votes. They use the opportunity to harmonize persons who will put up their names for the flag bearership of the party and their supporters to do a clean campaign devoid of insult and mass lingering. Reporting for the news, Rafik Salam. Wa. Meanwhile, the Minister for Food and Agriculture, Dr. Usefri Akoto, has resigned. He tendered in his resignation to President Ekofuado a while ago. This comes four days after Trade Minister Alan Chermantin resigned from the government. Here are full details of his resignation letter to the President. I submit my letter of resignation to His Excellency, the President Nana Adodanko Ekofuado at the Jubilee House. And... Um, I express my utmost appreciation to His Excellency for the opportunity to serve him and the people of Ghana from 2017 until now. I also place my continued support in all diverse ways to him and the NPP administration as we work hard to fulfill his vision of transforming the economy of Ghana and the lives of the people. I further wish to express profound gratitude to the people of Ghana, the hardworking staff of the ministry for all the support over the years. Dr. Ifri Akoto said, I will in the coming days make public my next political journey. He says, long live Ghana, long live the NPP. To other stories, workers of the Ghana National Gas Company have challenged the Energy Ministry to publish the Jensa Deal report if indeed it seeks to put to rest the controversy surrounding their demand for the President to intervene in current manner in which the Energy Ministry is handling the localization process. On Tuesday, the Energy Minister dismissed claims by the Association to the effect that it was manhandling the indigenization process of the Jensa deal, which will see a private entity taking over the state-owned facility. In another sharp response to the ministry's dismissal of their stance, the association says it will be in the best interest of all if the energy ministry makes public the report on the deal. Here is the statement, and I'll share uh, extracts with you. We did not accuse the ministry of energy of signing any contract between Ghana Gas and Jensa. Rather, as a head of supervising authority, the ministry gave approval to a deal that puts the nation's energy security primary assets 100% control over a private entity. There was no recourse to industry players' consultation, let alone CSO and parliament. So, I mean, they're trying to explain what exactly has happened. Now, it says, we challenge the Ministry of Energy to publish the report to presidency on this matter, which is of public interest. The ministry should also indicate when Parliament will complete the investigation referenced. The association is calling on Parliament to set up expert advisory committee, including Imani Africa, ASEP, and utility agencies, to vet our position. And it says, just like Bryce Simons, Esep and Imani published their copious report on Jensa Energy Deal without consulting the CEO or the Board of Ghana Gas or any person, but acted in their own capacity as concerned independent citizens. So has the knowledgeable GGSSA done. The SSA is an independent body from the Board and Management of Ghana Gas. Our press release was not directed from the CEO, neither was it influenced by the CEO. The SSA of Ghana has humbly, uh, humbly warned the Ministry of Energy to stick to the issues raised. We entreat the general public and the media particularly to take this matter seriously, just like they did for Doomsop. And the association is ever ready to have a civil discussion to ensure the country's primary energy asset is not compromised. And it says, we are not against private entity engagement, but to hand over a juicy primary asset 100% to the private entity is too much of sovereign risk and operational risk to the country and utility agencies. We, the members of the Ghana Gas Senior Staff Association, remain resolute and unperturbed to 
to defend and protect the indigenization policy, which gave birth to the establishment of the Ghana Gas Company. Away from that, some individual bondholders are pleading with government to exempt them from the ongoing domestic debt exchange program. Two of those who spoke on PM Express with Evans Mensa yesterday lamented the effects of the program on their lives should government go ahead to take away the investments that retiree pastor and a mother of five children say their entire lives are tied to the coupons from government. Here are excepts of uh, their concerns and plea. That is the money I'm surviving. The coupon is what I'm surviving on now. Someone will ask, but is she not married? Yes, I am married. And my husband's um, my husband also is into contract. But unfortunately, the contract is also not paying. Fine. So let's put that aside. It is about the bond holding. So how do I survive? We can't survive if it is being held. If the bonds are being held or the bonds are being roped in, into the debt exchange. So please. The government should please think about this. 17 and a half years working and then coming home, no. Nobody should include that into their debt exchange. They should think of getting another way. If it is about they cutting their expenditures, yes. But please, on your platform, we are getting through to the finance minister. He shouldn't in any way include our bonds into his debt exchange. We are begging him because I can't survive. How much am I even getting on the coupon? It isn't even up to a 30,000. And look at the children I have, the number of children with the family I have. It can't even, I mean, it is inadequate. So how do you include me into a debt exchange program? And when I retire, I have to use my money to buy a bond before this problem. Not advisable, my brother. Okay. But, but the money I got from my business in need contribution, I was having some property, piece of land. I sold it, add the money together so that I can make the profits from my bond okay. and take care of my children. Okay. So what it means is that you sold, you, 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 you retired, you took your lump sum, you sold your property, and you invested yeah. it in the bonds? Yes. Okay. Put it in the bond, yeah. Because I'm saying that to you, the benefit to take care of my children. Because how much will be, I'm a pastor, as I'm saying, how much will be my benefit, my brother, from this need? So I have to get another money to add to this money. But the good thing is that I'm on contract. So that contract is what I'm using for my personal use, and I'm using the benefit of the bond to pay my daughter's school fees as UPSA. So if it, I take my business, statement of account, any time the money comes in, I transfer it to my daughter so that she can use it to pay her school fees. If it, this morning I was at the bank to complain about my business benefit, the benefit was due on 3rd uh, January 2023. But no notice was given me. And I went to the bank. Fortunately, the money came. No notification was given me. No what to say. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm only thinking that the president himself should sit down, the finance minister should sit down and ask themselves if you were the one. If you were the one, they should sit down. Maybe today they are having their money. They don't need anything so they, they, they can misbehave anyhow. They are eating. They are drinking, they are flying, doing anything at all. They are not reasoning. It's with this, uh, this is the citizen's uh, life. They live our content. They live our content. Hi, good morning. Welcome to business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Ghana still remains a preferred destination for investments despite the current economic challenges. That's according to head of operations of the new home Ghana. Mushin Waris, a home decor retail chain. He says his outfit will capitalize various opportunities in the Ghanaian economy. He spoke to Joy Business at the opening of uh, Danube's outlet at Joel here in Accra. Today we are celebrating the opening, grand opening of our brand. It's called Danube Homes. 
Uh, it's a UAE Middle East based brand. It's one of the leading furniture and home improvement brands in Middle East. And now they're opening up in a lot of places in Africa. We are happy and honored to open this segment in Ghana. Danube Home, basically we do home furnishing, home improvement. We start from hardware, sanitary, furniture, home decor, artwork, everything we do. It's a one-stop shop. And it's, uh, you know, it's one of the leading brands and we're very proud to bring it here in Ghana. Um, I think Africa is, has a lot of potential. It's a growing economy. Given the issues last two, three years, it's a, everywhere. But apart from that, I think the opportunity is a lot in this country, uh, especially in Ghana. We see there are areas where, you know, there are places for improvement, more competition. I think competition is better. Uh, it gives the public more options. When there are more options, the quality and style of everything improves automatically. So that's what we're here to do. We're here with different style, different ideas, different products, than the general, what is there in the general market. I think it's a growing market. Uh, I see a lot of development happening. So if there is development, there are housing, offices, every building, it's natural you're going to need, you know, what we are bringing to the market over here. So there's a lot of space. There are a few companies that are doing very well. They have good items. And I think there is still a lot of gap for the general public, which we are here to fulfill. Thank you. Thank you. In other news, CEO of Magdan Group of Companies, Daniel McCauley, has commended the performance of the African continental free trade area, saying it has brought businesses in the continent together to harness trade activities after exists to create a single continental market for the movement of goods, services, and investments and eliminate trade barriers among member states. According to him, stakeholders must collaborate and find solutions to issues hampering the full potential of the trade pact. It's a big one. I mean, we don't have to joke with after. This is what is bringing the continent business uh, businesses together. You're talking about uh, a continent that is generating 3.4 billion, uh, 4 .4 trillion dollars in every 12 months yeah. and it is not something we have to joke with i mean my mou with after is to look at the logistic aspect i mean that's all after is all about i mean um buy two cargo planes and one vessel to move the cargo within the whole continent and it's a big one yeah. and also to have a trading company for after itself. So whilst we're dealing with the existing businesses, we're finding opportunities for um, businesses that are the emerging businesses and connecting them to the other part of the continent. So it's a big one. Mm. Well, we come from an environment where we all see problems. And I believe that uh, uh, you need a little bit of tenacity to uh, look uh, um, elsewhere differently from the same way of doing things. Um, it's been tough, uh, but it doesn't mean we should all sit back and uh, look at the troubles. I always say that in times of adversity, um, we, find, we have to find solutions to problems. All right, and that's it for business forces coming up next. To stay tuned. And that's how we wrap up news desk this morning. And you can log on to myjournline.com. There's more of the news and updates of all the developing stories. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Enjoy the rest of our programs.